All right, so hello everyone. I'm Lu Pengyang. Today I will talk about how to construct gluten resistant watermarkable pseudorandom functions from standard assumptions. This is a joint work with Man Ho Ao, Zhuo Xiaoyu, and Qiu Liangxu. So a watermarking scheme can embed some information into a digital object without changing it too much. Also, it should be hard to remove the embedded information in a watermarked object without damaging it. In this talk, we focus on watermarking schemes for programs. Formally, it consists of two algorithms, namely the marking algorithm and the extraction algorithm. The marking algorithm can embed message into a program with the marking key, and the extraction algorithm can extract the embedded message from a watermarked uh, program with an extraction key. Its correctness requires that the marking algorithm can roughly preserve the functionality of the watermarked program. Also, it requires that the extraction algorithm can extract the correct message from, uh, from an honestly watermarked program. Its main security <coughs> requirement is unremovability which requires that the adversary is not able to remove or modify message embedded in a watermarked program without significantly changing its functionality. Also, in practice, it is usually desired to have unremovability against collusion attacks. That is, the attacker can learn multiple watermark circuits, which are generated by embedding different messages into the same program. So this is a basic notion of watermarking schemes. One may hope to have secure, secure watermarking schemes uh, <coughs> for arbitrary programs. Uh, however, as shown by Kohei et al. in 2016, no watermarking scheme exists for learnable functionalities. So in the study of watermarking schemes, we really focus on watermark watermarking schemes for cartographic programs such as the decryption algorithm of an inquiry scheme, the signing algorithm of a signature scheme, and the evaluation algorithm of a signature function. So towards constructing secure watermarking schemes for cryptographic programs, we already know how to construct gluten resistant watermarking schemes for public key primitives from simple assumptions such as the existing so of one-way function and the standard lattice assumptions. But for watermark schemes for pseudonym functions, <coughs> previous constructions from standard assumptions can only achieve a weaker single challenge on removability. And the only known collusion re resistant watermark schemes for pseudonym functions are constructed from indistinguishability of classification. So <clears throat> the question is, can we construct gluten resistant automatable pseudonym functions from standard assumptions? Before presenting our solution to this question, we first recall how automatable pseudonym functions are constructed from standard assumptions in previous works. This is built on a primitive called constrained pseudonym function. Roughly speaking, a constrained pseudorandom function is a pseudorandom function family that allows one to derive a constraint k from a PRFK by puncturing the PRFK on the subset of the input space. The original k and the constraint k evaluate identically on all inputs outside the puncture set. But for input x in the puncture set, the output of fskx should still be pseudo-random even given the constraint k. When constructing watermarking schemes, we usually require a privately constrained pseudo function, which can hide the puncture site from the constraint k. And finally, we say that a constrained pseudo function is gluten resistant if its security holds against an adversary that can obtain more than one constraint case of the same PRFK. <clears throat> OK, so now with a constraint pseudonym function, we can construct a watermarking scheme for it. Uh, here, we start with a mark embedding watermarking scheme, which only 
embeds a mark symbol into a PFK. So in this game, the marking algorithm first generates a special fake input x star with its marking k. Then it punctures the secret k on x star and to get a constraint k. Uh, the watermarked program is just a circuit that ev evaluates the signal function with the constraint k. Uh, to test if a circuit is watermarked, the extraction algorithm for also first generates the special fake input x star, then it tests if the circuit is punctured on x star or not. The test is supported by special properties of the underlying constraint pseudonym function. For example, if the underlying constraint pseudonym function is extractable, then the extraction algorithm can extract the original secret key from the constraint secret key with a trapdoor. And then it can test if the circuit is punctured on X star by testing if the circuit and the original secret key evaluate identically on X star. Security of the watermarking scheme comes from security of the underlying constraint student function, which prevents the lower three from learning the, pun the punctured point X star and modifying the output of the circuit on X star. Okay, so this is how the what uh, how the mark and binding automatic scheme works, and based on this, to embed an n bit message instead of a, a mark symbol into the PRFK, the marking algorithm will encode bits of the message into different puncture points. In particular, it can first generate n pairs of special fake inputs, and and then it selects uh each input from uh, uh, selects one input from each pair by using each bit of the message and then it can puncture the PRFK on the selected inputs to get the constraint K and the watermarked program is a circuit that evaluates the student function with the constraint K. To extract the embedded message from a watermarked circuit, the extraction algorithm also first generates these pairs of specific inputs. Then it recovers the i bit of the message by testing if the circuit is punctured on xr0 star or xr1 star. It sets mi to be 0 if the circuit is punctured on xr0 star, and it sets mi to be 1 if the circuit is punctured on xr1 star. Otherwise, it outputs a simple in a simple indicating that uh, the circuit is not watermarked. Correctness and the single key on readability of the message embedding automatic scheme come from uh, properties of the underlying constraint pseudonym function, just as in the case of mark embedding automatic scheme. But the scheme is not clone resistant. To this, recall that a clone attacker for the automatic scheme can obtain multiple automatic circuits which are generated by embedding different messages into the same PRFK. Since the embedded messages are different, the punk set and thus the constraint system of, uh, and the constraint keys are also different. So the adversary can in fact learn multiple constraint keys of the same PRFK from the watermark circuit. That is to say to uh, guaranteeing chlorine resistant on reliability of the watermarking scheme, we require that the underlying constraint signal function should also be chlorine resistant. However, in all previous constructions of watermarking schemes or of watermarkable signal functions from standard assumptions, the constraint signal function used are not chlorine resistant. In words, as shown by Kennedy and Chen in 2017, chlorine resistant privately constraint syndrome function implies indistinguishability of classification. Since privately constraint syndrome function is essential in most constructions of watermarkable syndrome functions, it seems impossible to construct chlorine resistant watermarkable syndrome functions from standard assumptions. So, in this work, we attempt to overcome this barrier in another direction. That is, we will try to construct glue-resistant automatic functions from single-key circuit 
constraint through functions. Okay. So our key idea is to encode bits of the message into different secret keys instead of including them into different pointer points. Uh, so in more detail, our watermarkable pseudonym function is a repetition of n constraint pseudonym functions. And the secret key of the watermarkable pseudonym function consists of n secret keys of the underlying constraint pseudonym function. The marking algorithm first generates n pairs of specific inputs. Uh, then it selects one input from each pair using one bit of the message. And then it punctures the i secret key on xr mi star. The watermarked program is a circuit that evaluates with all these n constraint keys. To extract the embedded message from a watermarked circuit, the extraction algorithm also, also first generates these n pairs of specific inputs. Then it recovers the i bit of the message by testing if the circuit is if, uh, if the i part of the circuit, uh, which evaluates with the i constraint k, is punctured on xr0 star or xr1 star. It sets rmi to be 1 if the circuit is punctured on xr1 star, and it sets rmi to be 0 otherwise. To see what security can be guaranteed by our first solution, we consider a simplified example that n equals 3 and the low 3 is only able to obtain two watermark circuits, which are embedded with messages 101 and 110, respectively. Uh, the adversary is able to learn three pairs of constraint keys from the watermark circuit. And for the first pair of constraint keys, the, both of them are generated by puncturing SK1 on X11 star. Since the puncture points are the same, the constraint keys are also identical. So the adversary is only able to obtain one constraint case of SK1. Then by single case security of the underlying constraint theorem function, the bit 1 embedded in SK1 should count be uh, removed or modified by the other three. Uh, however, for SK2 and SK3, since they will be punctured on different inputs, so the adversary can still obtain more than one constra constrained versions of them. That is to say, the single case security of the online constraint theorem function uh, does not uh, count restrict the, the adversary here. So the adversary is still able to remove or modify bits embedded in SK2 and SK3. So to summarize here, in our first construction, the adversary is not able to modify bits at a position if all messages agree on this position. But it can still modify bits in other positions. So our first construction can only achieve a weak uh, security guarantee, and to upgrade this weak security guarantee to collision resistant on reliability, we use a fingerprinting code. Here, we describe the notion of fingerprinting code in a slightly different way for ease of explanation. So, roughly speaking, a fingerprinting code consists of two algorithms, namely the encoding algorithm and the decoding algorithm. The encoding algorithm can encode a message into a code word with a trapdoor, and the decoding algorithm can decode the code word to recover the original message with the same trapdoor. Uh, its security requires that, uh, given multiple code words which are generated by encoding different, different messages, the adversary is not able to create a string that decodes to a new message. Of course, we should restrict the adversary's ability in generating the string. So here, we request that uh, the adversary is not allowed to modify bit at a position if all code words agree on this position. For example, if the adversary can receive two code words 101 and 110, then it is not allowed to 
submit a string double star such that double star one equals zero. This is called the marking assumption. So now with a fingerprint code, we can upgrade our first cons construction uh, to achieve chlorine resistant on removability. So in our second construction, the marking algorithm first encodes the message uh, into a code word. Then it embeds the code words into NPF case just uh, using the uh, marking algorithm of our first construction. To extract the embedded message from a uh, watermarked circuit, the extraction algorithm also first uh, recover the code word from the watermarked uh, circuit as before. Then it decodes the code word to obtain the original message. Security of our second construction comes from security of our first construction and security of the fingerprint code. First, security of our first construction can uh, ensure that the dosary is not able to modify bit at a position if all code words agree on this position. This is exactly the marking assumption. Then, by security of the fingerprint code, the decoding algorithm can still recover one of the embedded messages. And then, the chlorine resistant on reliability follows. So this is our sec second construction and why it is chlorine resistant on, rem on removal. Note that in the construction and the secure proof, we don't rely on concrete properties of the underlying constraint signal function. And it is safe to replace it with any single case secure watermarkable signal function. So our construction in fact provides a compiler that up upgrade a single case circuit watermarkable serum function into a clone resist one. All right. So this is our basic idea on how to construct clone resistant watermarkable serum function from standard assumptions. We also extend our basic construction to achieve a strong unreliability. This is built on several new ideas, including a new construction of fingerprint code which achieves a stronger security guarantee. Also, we consider another uh, security property called unforgeability for automatic schemes. Unforgeability requires that, uh, requires that the adversary is not able to create new automatic circuits without the marking key. And in this work, we provide a new framework that adds strong unforgeability to watermarking schemes without this security property. For some reason, we are not able to cover all these technical details in this talk, and please see our full paper for more details. So now to conclude, in this work, we provide a general, construct, a general construction that transform a single case circuit uh, watermarking schemes for signal functions into a colonial system one. By applying our transformation to existing constructions of single case circuit watermarkable signal functions from standard assumptions, we obtain um, several standard assumption based clone resistant watermarkable signal functions with various security guarantees. The new schemes can roughly preserve security properties of the original scheme, and they can achieve unforgeability for free. Mm, however, uh, the new schemes can only achieve on reliability with bounded exchange queries, even if the original scheme can achieve on reliability with unbounded exchange queries. It is an interesting open problem to see how to remove this, this restriction in our construction. Another issue of our construction is that it only support a polynomially large message space. And it's an interesting future work to see uh, if we can construct chlorine resistant automarkable pseudorum functions with exponentially large message, message space from standard assumptions. So that's all. Thanks for your attention.